Today on Dub World, I will be removing and repairing the speedometer from this 1969 Volkswagen Beetle. Originally, this video intended to be a troubleshooting video for fuel sending unit and fuel gauge, but it turned more into repairing the speedometer, so I decided to just focus on that with this video. The tools you'll need for this job are really simple, a long Phillips screwdriver, a small flathead screwdriver, some grease, and possibly a 13 millimeter wrench so you can disconnect the battery. If you like detailed videos, this one's for you because it is long and very detailed. If you're new to the channel, thanks for watching today. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share these videos. The purpose of this channel is to just share knowledge with our fellow VW enthusiasts. Okay, we're ready to start the repair. Here we go. If you wanna do any work on your dash on a 68, an up standard beetle. Chances are you're probably gonna have to remove this air box. Now later beetles, Mexican beetles don't have this. Um, Volkswagen had a couple different styles. They had this which is just a passive air and they had one that had an actual electric fan in it. So it's held in by three screws up here. Phillips head screws, which I've taken off right there. Then you've got one 10 millimeter down here. You should have a drain hose that kind of looks like this paper hose here. Looks like somebody either used a piece of garden hose or something from Home Depot. But if you don't have that drain here, all the water is going to pour into your trunk and it's going to rust. So you want to make sure you have something here to drain the water out from this box. So once you get the 10 millimeter off down there, screws off up here just kind of pull it down pull it off the hose and just kind of set it out of the way there okay when you're going to remove the speedometer it's held in by two screws one on each side um, and this is a standard beetle other models, especially 73 and later Super Beetles, speedometer comes out from inside the car because you don't have access to all the wiring inside the trunk like this. So you've got two Phillips screws, one on each side here, and on the other side, you've got your speedometer cable right here. That just screws off. Then you've got various bulbs and some wiring connectors. I recommend to anyone, and this is something I still do to this day, get your camera in there and take some photos or shoot video. Get it in there so you can see where the wiring is, so you can see where the connections are. That way, when you pull it apart and you have to put it back together, you don't mess up where the wires go. There's two pieces to the fuel gauge. There's the gauge itself, and then there's the vibrator. Then you've got the sending unit in the gas tank. So this is for any of the Volkswagens that have electronic fuel gauges. So you can have an opportunity for three potential failures. The gauge itself, the vibrator, and then the unit in the tank. I'll tell you, in order to get the screw off back there, you're gonna have to go through here, all the way back there, with a nice long screwdriver. You do have live power in here, so you're gonna to wanna to be careful. You can short things out, cause a spark. If you get any leaking fuel, you can cause a fire. Generally speaking, if you're gonna do anything electrical, you want to disconnect the battery. But I just wanted to show you a inside view. Now the speedometer, once you unscrew it, it does go, does get removed from behind the dash. I've got this new fuel gauge which I purchased from CIP1. See the part number there. VWC 113957063B. Supposedly fits 68 on and also for Super Beetle 71 through 79. So this is a fuel gauge that I got on sale. Back 
in there pretty nice. Oops, sorry. See it in the camera there. So there it is. Here's the one that was in this. So simply we're going to be removing back here, putting in this new gauge. Now this piece right here is what Volkswagen calls the vibrator. I see this failing a lot on later model Beetles. Supposedly it's good on this one. Do have a new fuel sending unit in the tank. So here's the vibrator off, which get this little fuel gauge out. Looks like a pretty good reproduction, not 100% identical, but it looks pretty good. But really what we care about is whether it works. That's the big In order to pull the speedometer part, you've got to get the chrome trim ring off. Now, if you can get a small screwdriver in here to get this started, to get this pulled off, that's fine. You can peel it all the way around. Generally, I'll stick something like a feeler gauge in here. It just depends how tight it is. But if you can get it to pull off without bending it by going around, that's what you want to do. And I'll show you that in a second. All right, sorry, I had to pull it out of frame here so I could try to get this in and just pry it a little bit. And once you get it going and you pull on it, you can actually peel the glass off here. Now this is the chrome ring, chrome ring, the glass, and this trim. There's also a rubber seal in there. So you want to be careful you don't drop that. So there's your bare speedometer. So the next thing would be to remove these two screws back here. Once you get these out, that's what holds the speedometer into the shell. This little piece right here, or sometimes will keep it from coming apart. Just push on it. And there you go. Now they're going to vary from year to year. This one. Again, it's a 69. It's got these little rubber caps with the translucent pieces that go right here. Give you your lights. The uh, earlier speedometers aren't gonna have that. They just have a piece of colored plastic that goes behind here. These typically will, well, the old, I would say the older ones typically don't fail with the gears, um, but they are plastic, so they can fail. The newer model speedometers definitely, usually this gear right here that fails, because this is plastic on the newer style. This is metal, brass, I believe, back here. But as you can see here, that's how you can tell if a speedometer is working, obviously. But there's one other issue in here. Um, this one actually was a speedometer that I found at a swap meet that had been submerged in water took it apart, I cleaned it, put it back together, it was working fine.
However, it does have a little bit of an issue where it's not reading correctly. So I want to take it apart and lubricate it. Now you can pull the peg off the front here and then take off these two screws, take the face plate off. I don't need to do that because what I need to get is back in here. And I've got a screw here. I'm sorry for the camera screw here and a screw here. Oof, and I am sweating like crazy out here in this Florida heat, even though I'm in the shade. It's dripping everywhere. Be so happy when fall actually gets here. But we don't get our first cold weather in Florida usually till about the second week in October, maybe third week. It will give us usually a day or two of some cooler weather. And then we go right back to Florida weather. Okay. So this in here, there's a magnet in here. This is pretty cruddy looking, all that is. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to clean it. And that sits in here and it spins. So there is a spring in here too that can get rusty. Or gummed up. Looks like everything's okay. It does need to be cleaned up, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so I've, I've got a little brake parts cleaner on this rag. And I'm just going around the magnetic wheel in here, cleaning off that grunge that was on it. As you can see here, it's pretty nasty. This is probably why the speedometer is acting funky. It's throwing off balance. There's quite a bit of grunge on this thing. I've never seen one this dirty before. Not that I've dissected too many speedometers in the last few years, but I rebuilt many of them back in the day. So I'm just going to get in here and screw it over and just clean this up as best I can. Sorry, I keep popping out of the camera makes things a little more difficult when you're trying to work on something and be mindful of where the camera is so I'm not looking through the camera so if you can see in here there is grease and it does need to be greased and I'm gonna get this old grease at least most of it out of here some nice new grease in here and it'll help it move a little smoother I want to make sure everything's moving smoothly the gear looks fine you can see that and again this is a plastic gear they tend not to break on these older ones at least not here um, I've worked on many speedometers, older ones, and I don't think I've ever had to replace any of these. I'm not saying they don't break because they are plastic, but the quality of the plastic back in the day was a lot better than it is now. Oops, now I'm dropping screws on the ground. And I just, just lost one of them, so that'll be fun to find. I don't know if you can see it, but right behind the speedometer needle, right up in here, there's a spring that's wound around there. And that is supposed to put tension on your needle to keep it, keep it down here. 
I'll be honest with you. These do break sometimes. You can see here how it's supposed to bring it back. If that's not happening, chances are that spring is broken and you're going to need to replace it. Um, that's going to be fun to do. I don't know what you can do to replace those. Generally speaking, in the past, I would just find another speedometer and get pieces from it um, to replace it. I don't know if you can see it at that angle. There's a little bit of a needle in there. And that's the piece that actually goes right in the center there. Hopefully you can see this. I know it looks a little dark. But that's what fits right in that little hole right there when you're putting it together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish cleaning this. <clears throat> this one as well. Grease it up and I'll put it back together. This gear here, this gear here, is the one that goes right back in here. But I wanted to show you something. When I was cleaning the grease off it, spin it around, spin it around. Right here, one of the teeth is a little bit out of shape. I don't know if you can see it in the camera when I twist it. But that can cause binding. So I'm actually going to reshape this a little bit with a file. All the other ones look good, except for this one right here. All right, I put a little dab of grease on the bottom, little dab, dabs of grease on the top. This piece goes in here next to this metal gear. You don't have to grease this. I've never seen them grease, so I don't put grease there. No. Sorry. Got to use multiple hands. in there working it around <clears throat> wipe off any excess Don't want it to be too sloppy in there but you want to make sure I'm sorry I'm out of the camera again I want to make sure that you get enough on it so it gets on the gear back in here but not too much so it's oozing out everywhere Okay. All right, again, like I told you, there's a magnet in there. You got the little pin in there. You got to try to match everything up. You got to match these gears together. Be very careful when you're doing this so that it just kind of slides together. I'm sorry. Hopefully, you were able to see that on the camera. But you want to make sure you're not pinching anything, you're not bending anything. This needs to just naturally fall together. And if it's right, it's just gonna fall into place. Now you can flip it over. Um, <coughs> popped it out of the pin. As you can see there, that has to go in the hole. If you flip it over, you should be able to put your screwdriver in or something, test it, make sure everything's working. Okay. And then once you see that that's right, you can go ahead and screw it back together. I'm sorry, I'm trying to be able to see and also have you be able to see, but it's kind of hard to get a screw, in the, screw into the hole when I can't see. So I've got these two little screws here. And by the way, Volkswagen puts paint on these 
so you can see if they've ever been taken apart. Um, I don't know if you can see it in the camera right there. This one had never been taken apart according to that paint. Just want to snug these up. Check, make sure everything's lined up. Again, nothing popped out. You can see that pin is in there. Again, see how things rotate. Seems to be working fine. So if your odometer doesn't work, generally that's because something's broken in here. That's usually the case. You could have one of these gears in here, it could have jumped. These pins sometimes can pop out. Anything can happen. I've never seen any of the mile wheels broken, but again, old plastic, anything can happen. Generally speaking, and again, later model spinometers, Volkswagen went with a plastic gear here. I'm not sure what year they changed. I don't remember anymore. But once they change this to a plastic gear, virtually every car that you get that has a broken odometer, that's the culprit right there. There is a workaround to fix it. If the gear is not completely broken in half, usually what will happen is it will split on one side. And then when this is turning, it just won't grab right. So what you can do is you can actually pull this gear off. And again, this is on a later speedometer. Pull this gear off. You can put some glue in and you can fit a tight washer over this. Pop it back on, let the glue sit, the washer will hold it together. That will be a repair. I've done it many times before. It lasts a long time um, with that metal washer on there. Um, some cases I've never had to fix it again. But uh, that's a tip for you if you have a broken odometer. Let me go ahead and finish reassembly. Now sadly, I don't have any new plastic that I could put over here to fix this which is unfortunate because now's the time to do all that detail work when you have it apart. But I get this together. Make sure you don't lose anything. Anything comes apart. A little bit of a trick, and I'll show you here, I'm trying to avoid having these covers pop off. But it's a little bit of a trick to get this to come out. You kind of have to twist it, but in that same regard, you want to make sure that none of these little covers come off at the same time. Okay, <laughs> I had to take the speedometer out of the picture so I could bring it closer to me to get this through. So again, you're going to have to kind of wiggle this around in order to get this pulled through. A little bit of a pain sometimes. And then when it slides in, everything will fit right in. Nice. Okay. Once you get that done, you can go ahead and screw it together. You're going to have to make sure that this pin lines up back here and comes through the hole. Actually, if you can see it, it's not completely aligned yet. There it is now. Now it's through. See how it's sticking through? All right, now you can put your screws on. And you know, this, doing this job is kind of like luck of the draw. Sometimes, as I said, the outer trim ring is usually the hardest thing to get off and on. But then as you can see here, we ran into the situation where just getting this back through the case was kind of a pain. And that's actually been the worst thing that we've had. Once this is all tightened up, uh, and I would say while you got it out, make sure you, you clean your, your face, get any dust off there. Um, I've done this before on this one. Also, the glass totally took out and cleaned. So that's good to go. make sure these little feet are down on here this is aluminum all right now I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on
and it does have as you can see in the trim it does have the groove there on the side so obviously you have to line it up so what I do is try to get one one edge under the lip and then pull try to get it on well, in that case it popped right on we didn't have any issue again this is something that usually you may have a big problem with trying to get it back together but it went right on a little bit on the loose side which is probably why it went right back on but as long as it's not popping off you're okay you can go around and kind of tighten these edges if they're popped up at all from when you pried it earlier um, I will say I have seen people go and completely pry around the edge you don't want to do that because you'll damage it you can just simply pull up on an edge and get it over the lip and just go around and if you have a plastic tool that's even better um, they sell a lot of tools for like iPhones and phone repairs they're great for getting in these cases I actually have one that I use that goes right in the lip and you can just pop it out I didn't use it now because honestly I couldn't find it so let's go ahead and put the new fuel gauge in get that right back in there is going uh, I'm dripping sweat over everything and I'm inside the garage here with the door open but if I was outside I wouldn't be able to do this it's just too darn hot out there all right so there's our new fuel gauge inside see it there um, uh oh did you see that looks like we had it sticking there this is a way to check a speedometer if you're at a swap meet you don't have anything with you you can simply do this if it's not moving you got a problem now it doesn't mean the speedometer is destroyed but you're gonna have to do some work to it but it should easily move and then come right back now this one, when I moved it, it stuck for a second. I'm hoping it doesn't mean we have an issue. Of course, we'll find out when it goes in the car. But I know it definitely works. Now we have to put this vibrator back on, and that just goes right on here. You can see this is kind of loose, so I'm going to want to tighten this up a little bit by crimping it. While you've got this vibrator off, make sure you clean the connections either with a wire brush or some sandpaper. You just want to make sure you have the best contacts as possible on here when you're satisfied with it go ahead and install it now I tighten this up so it fits on here nice and snug and we've got this screw it's the last one hold this on Okay, and that's tight. Just make sure you go through and double check all your screws. Make sure they're tight. Obviously, you don't want to have one fall apart and roll around in your dash. If you look on the backs of these speedometers, it will tell you what year they were manufactured. There, if you can see it right here, this says 4 of 69. So, of course, April of 69. Uh, sometimes you're going to get uh, painted number right here stamped with the date as well but if you're trying to do a period correct restoration 
Um, even if your internals are junk, just make sure you save your case so you can have the correct date stamp on it. But that is, of course, the Volkswagen part number in the year. But that's how you can know if you have a speedometer that's correct for your car or if you still have the original speedometer. The speedometer has to be tucked back in here behind everything. And fortunately, I'm going to have to put the camera down. But I've got to reconnect everything, which you won't be able to see because there's no room to see. Even I can't see without a camera in the way. So after filling the fuel tank up, the fuel gauge was not showing above half a tank. So a brand new sender, brand new fuel gauge, and we still have a problem. Not sure if the part is defective or if I have another issue going on. One thing that I did find out after reinstalling the speedometer is the fuel gauge did not initially work. And there was a connector, which I'll show you here, that runs between the main wire and the vibrator that was not getting continuity. So I decided to remove this connector and just wire the vibrator directly. That made the gauge start working, but again, only at half full when the tank was full. That's all for today's video. We'll be doing more regarding the fuel sending unit and the fuel gauge in the future. As always, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing, sharing, and liking the videos. Whenever you do that, it helps to grow the channel and get the word out to other VW enthusiasts.